All right, guys, we have made another discovery, another big YouTuber. Remember, like from a while ago, we also had someone saying United pay, pay to win, and it's happened again. A 2 million, 2 million subscribed YouTube channel posted a video about Pokemon Unite being a pay to win game that is trying to scam you. And you can see in the thumbnail it says, You will die unless you pay 100,000 pay now. And a very disgusted face by the YouTuber. So let's just check it out and see how valuable his things are, and you know, if there's something I agree with, some things I disagree with. I'm just gonna take a look at this video. But yeah, 12 million. 12 million, sorry, 12 million. Pokemon, Call of Duty, Diablo Immortal, Raid Shadow Legends. These are just some of the hundreds of games that are run by scammers effectively trying to bankrupt you. We're going to expose them for who they are. Three weeks ago, I started yeah, playing the incredibly popular mobile game, Pokemon Unite. It seems simple. You're in one team of Pokemon, and your goal is to head to the other side of the map and score goals against the other team of Pokemon. It's completely free to play, and over 100 million people have downloaded the game. But... I had only just finished the tutorial by the time I was slapped with a full-page ad to spend $10 on something called the Unite membership. No way, I thought. So, I closed that tab and carried on playing. Not realizing mm -hmm. at this point that this was all part of a bigger plan to rinse me of everything that I own. It took just six more minutes of playtime before I was greeted with this. See, the game gives you a login bonus every single day that you come back to the game and play. But this pass effectively gives you bonuses on top of that bonus, which actually seemed pretty reasonable for the 60 EOS gems that it cost me, which equates to about $1 in real money. So I bought it. One of the first times I've ever spent money in a free okay. game. I felt alive. Kind really? of like how you feel when oh. you manage to nab one of those Amazon lightning deals just before they run out. After the first couple of days though, I, mean, I started to notice terrible. that while I was getting plenty of new stuff and constant level ups, and I had been given four different Pokemon to play with, I started losing. Like, a lot. I started to realize that this game was less about skill on the battlefield. The combat is effectively just mashing your different attacks as soon as they become ready to use. This guy's never played war before. How strong you make your Pokemon before you step foot on the battlefield. So, I decided so that that's I... already the thing. He literally says he noticed that he couldn't win any more games. It's then the first one minute thirty. He talks about how he doesn't win games anymore, and then he noticed something. I needed that's some actually items. insane, right? Held items are what you equip to your Pokemon to give them improved stats. So I yeah. headed to the shop, and I spent about half of the total in-game EOS coins I'd earned so far buying three items: one that increases my maximum health, one that gives me health regeneration, and one that increases my damage output. And he I bought thought, leftovers. I... Don't you get that for free by playing? Don't you get all of these items for free by playing the game? Italy, my Pokemon is kitted out. I don't have to think about this anymore. I can just play the game. So I charged into battle with my head held high and I got absolutely demolished. It became very clear to me at this point that it wasn't just enough to buy the held items. Because when you first get one, they're almost completely useless. Like this attack increasing scope lens that I bought, it was literally giving me a 0.4% extra chance of getting a critical hit that dealt more damage. Imagine adding 0.4% to your dinner one evening. You'd get one extra P. In order to become competitive in ranked matches, you actually need to level your items up all the way to grade 30. At which point they will give you a big game-changing buff, like let's say 15% game -changing buff. more damage. 15% more damage? Like, it's already like, he just never played the game, right? 15% more damage? 15% more damage? But the problem is, leveling up your items is a ridiculous process. You can't earn levels with skillful play, you have to buy them with something called item enhancers. But then, these item enhancers are so unbelievably slow to earn through any organic means, that I was practically forced to make my second purchase. The Battle Pass. This game, and almost he, he every other mobile game like pass. it, uses battle passes. Okay, he was forced to buy the battle pass, guys. Paying more money. Item every enhancers. time you complete a game, it'll tell you the rewards you earned. And he was forced to buy it. You could have earned on top of that if only you bought the battle pass, which is just this whole extra stream of rewards to keep playing and keep coming back to the game. <laughs> he was forced and to buy the battle pass. A lot of those rewards just so happened to How about you play the game in events? Item enhancers. But this was ten dollars in and real money. I bought it, because the alternative option was to sign away weeks of my life grinding for it, but I was becoming very aware at this point that I'd already spent more on this game than I had in any mobile game I'd ever played before. Still, at least now really? when I was playing, I could guarantee myself a steady supply of new item enhancers so I could remain a competitive battler. And that's about what This is like, he said he had to buy the battle pass to be a competitive battler. expect the story to end, right? 
wrong. Because right when I thought that I just paid my way out of my problems, is actually when things took the biggest dive so far. Because it's at this point that I realized just how many of these item enhancers I was going to need. See, when you're upgrading your items, all you leftovers. can see is how many you're item enhancers are to go from the level you're on to the next level. And so when I saw that all of my level one items just needed three item enhancers to level up, and then I saw that with this battle pass, I could get myself a bundle of 30 item enhancers every few days of playing, I thought that this $10 would easily cover me. Thank you. But what the game didn't tell me was that every single level you go up with your held items, the more item enhancers you need to get to the one after that. So that actually, to get my three held items to level 30, it wasn't that I needed 100 or 200 of them, I actually needed no less than 7,700. I mean, that's not wrong. When I realized you don't this, need it, that's the thing, right? Practically hit the floor. You don't need to have 30 head items to play the game. In the entire base game of Pokemon Unite, the maximum amount of item enhancers you can possibly earn without getting into the whole loot box opening system is 1,535. If every I game works maxed kinda, out yeah. my battle pass, which is already something that I've paid for on top of that, I could bag myself an extra 360. But I mean, not only would this process take me roughly 150 days, of playing every single day to earn, but even with that, I would still need to find a way to get the remaining 5,866 item enhancers that I still needed. And that's when you have almost no option but to turn to the shop. How much do you no, think this is turn to the shop. A simple, almost required mobile game required. purchase. $100. 100 what? real money dollars. About what now? What is he spending $100 on? What is the $100 for? What is he required? And if you wanted to max out all of your items, not just the three that you currently have equipped, $760. Are you kidding me? No! God, please, no! You could probably fly out to Japan, go to the actual Pokemon Center, and buy yourself a real Pikachu for that price. But the scary part of it so is that at this point, what choice did I have? I poured so much time and love into my account that I didn't feel like so much time and laugh, you just said you don't even want to grind it at all. To just stop playing. Oh, it was man. either I pay $100 or I accept that I will be disproportionately disadvantaged in every future game that I ever want to play. I decided to go for it. Which I know is probably the single most pointless purchase I've made in my entire life. And I have made a lot of pointless purchases over the years, but I wanted to give you guys a real experience. I wanted to know and to be able to show you what would happen next. And sure enough, somehow it managed to get even worse. Because then, only at this point, only $100 into this supposedly free mobile game, did I find out how Pokemon Unite makes its big money. So we've established at this point that EOS gems are the premium currency that you can use to buy almost anything in the game. But it's not the only currency, because you also have EOS coins, which can buy most of the things that gems can. Which are free. Them. Next we have tickets, which come in three flavors. EOS tickets, fashion free. tickets, and holo tickets. Fashion and holo tickets are not playing for your trainer and Pokemon of choice. Oh, which is just cosmetics that don't do anything at all. Aeos tickets let you buy those item enhancers, as well as boost cards that increase the amount of experience points sure. you earn. Tickets, like coins, can be earned in events and challenges, but when those run dry, you do need to buy them with gems. Are you keeping up? Because then on top... You can't buy... Co why, is, why is there an error from the coins towards the holoware? Like, it, this is a nicely edited video, but like, why is Aeos coins with an arrow towards holoware? And you can't even buy Aeos coins with gold with money, anyways. You you can't you can't buy Aeos coins with. When those run dry, money. you do need to buy them with gems. Are you keeping up? Because then on top of that, you have Aeos energy. Are you which keeping? Is required <laughs> if you want to play a match and get the proper set of rewards, but it's gradually. You Why is there an entire thing now towards Aeos energy? Used up every time you do so, and we've even now got the limited time cake currency for the ongoing anniversary cake challenge. On top of that. The cake challenge? So, and we've when... even now got the limited time cake. Cake challenge? But that's, isn't it that like, aren't these challenges like free stuff? Also, the Earth anniversary thing, that was literally free, you can't even buy those. Huh? I mean, what's the problem of free currency? If you had more guessed, after two weeks of playing this game, my head was spinning. The game is so unbelievably confusing, to the point of being stressful, and I was about to find out that it is intentionally designed that way. Not to mention that I worked out if I actually wanted to continue to play the game competitively, with full access to all the characters I wanted to use, with a nice selection of outfits for them, and enough energy that I would continue to get rewards for doing so, this game was going to cost me, at the very least, another $1,200 over the next six months. $1,200? Did he just... <laughs> what? Where did he get those $1,200 from?
For skins, did he count every single skin together to get every single holoware so you can continue playing? It's just, it's actually... The game down. I like this thing, laptop, these kind of videos hurt Pokemon Unite. Digging. And this is where I understood just how much I was being and was about to be manipulated. This just hurts the Unite, like it's such fake... ...are effectively scammers stuff. have actually become. So it all starts with the first spend. And this isn't a term that I've invented. This is a term that's actually being used by developers. This is Torof Jernstrom, CEO of the mobile game company Tribeflame, giving a talk on monetization strategies for mobile games. The first spend, it breaks the ice, then they think of themselves as spenders in the game. It's okay for me to spend in the game. And what he's teaching these other developers is that 98% of players, when they first start playing a free mobile game, will go into it under the premise that they won't be making any in-app purchases. I was one of them, most likely you're one of them too. But the second that these games can get you to lay down your first dollar, they've effectively broken your barrier. I mean, your willingness to then make further payments will skyrocket. So you need to break the wall first. In hindsight, this must be why Pokemon Unite gave me that super cheap login bonus just six minutes after I started playing. They don't care about a dollar, they just wanted to crack me, to turn me from a free player into a spender. And I only realized this after watching this developer talk about it, but the way that the game manipulated me into buying it was through the anchoring technique. By first presenting me with an I mean, expensive sure, like, this is not wrong, but that like, they actually knew that I wouldn't buy. That that, that's every video show, game ever existing right now. That that's every single mobile about game, right? What a set of prizes is worth in this game. Which that's meant every that when they then game. swooped in with that one dollar deal to get the login bonus pass, I mean, that's obviously I bad. Foolish for turning I agree. down because of the comparative value. I got played. But I've realized that the reason you got played, I you did, just so literally didn't have to spend money. Purchase, and the reason that no. so many people pour so much cash into these games is based on another simple human facet that's being exploited. We like to be better than our peers. It's baked into our very DNA that our survival depends on having a competitive advantage versus the people around us. And so, pit wealthy players against each other at something, allow each of them to be able to pay for that competitive advantage, and the only party that really wins is the game developer who's charging them. You can see this technique in all the most popular games. Like just recently, Diablo Immortal, where you will get completely oh, that's like, sliced well, apart now we talk by the about players who spend big is money, who are called whales in the industry. Finally. Mind you, that's the gambling industry we're talking about. It says something about this. If you're trying to be a free player in Diablo Immortal, you're effectively a side character to these whales. And your best chance of winning is just to stick by their side and to support Now, them. this is a game you should have made a video about. Like, that's, I think, my biggest issue, right? Like, Unite is a very... It, it has pay-to-win elements. I never, I've never denied that Unite doesn't have pay-to-win elements. It has, like, the lowest amount of pay-to-win elements, right? If you get more stats, it's pay-to-win. If you can buy for more stats, it's pay-to-win. But you don't win in Unite by paying, right? There's so many mobile games out there, like the mobile game I play called AFK Arena. You know, the top players in the game spend 100,000 to 500,000 euros to stay competitive in a mobile game. In Unite, you literally do not have to spend a single cent and you can be rank 1, right? Like, he could have not chosen a worse game to call mobile games pay to win. Like, he literally has picked the wrong game. It gives that I know he's just hating on Unite. ...who is willing to spend thousands of dollars, that power trip feeling that keeps them coming back to spend even more. And sadly, even if you're... If I, in FK Arena, if I want to be rank 1, I would probably have to spend half a million now if I want to get to rank 1. And I think then I can't even get rank 1 in FK Arena. That's how insane this. And any night you can do it just without, like, you literally do not have, you don't need anything. You'll never be one of these whale it's players, crazy. you're still unknowingly fueling the system. Being able to tear you apart with ease, it makes you the thrill that the whales keep paying for. And this is where I really start to hate this. If it was as simple as you pay a load of money and then you just win from now on, that would be too kind. That would mean that the devs would miss out on making any further money from the whales. So they found a way around that too. What these games do now is when you pay to make yourself significantly stronger, they'll let you have your first few satisfying wins with noticeably weaker players to stimulate that reward mechanism and for you to associate that purchase with a positive feeling. But once that's over, we'll soon start pitting you against other players who've also spent large sums of money in the game. Thus, any other game, any other mobile game, he probably has a point, man. You know, if he plays, if he just made a video about any other mobile game, that is like a gacha game. I I support his opinion, but like, why unite? Always creating this feeling that why unite? no matter how much you've already paid, you're always one purchase away from being content, from being better than your peers, but never actually you're not... getting there because there will always be people willing to spend even more than you. This is why I felt like no matter how much I was spending in Pokemon Unite, I still kept losing. And I mean, Diablo Immortal. <laughs> this is this is just ridiculous.
no matter how much I was spending in Pokemon Unite, Listen I still to this. kept losing. And I mean, this is why I felt like no matter how much I was spending in Pokemon Unite, I still kept losing. And I mean, Diablo Absolutely Immortal ridiculous. is even worse. You know how like it's quite a big deal to pay $10 for an in-game purchase? You know how like I was absolutely appalled that you had to spend a thousand in Pokemon Unite? Well, in this game, it can cost you $100,000. To yeah, I mean, max see. out your character. A hundred thousand dollars to actually escape this feeling of constantly just needing a little bit more power. And that's just until they release an update that increases that cap. So, I've made my first purchase. I'm already feeling the social pressure of wanting to be better than other people. That's just step one of the hook habit hobby model that's starting to become the playbook for a top grossing game. Because to make the real it's money tough to watch. Me, they also have to make sure that their game becomes a habit. And uh, according to this guy, the best way to do that is to give me rapid progression to start with, to make sure that the first few levels are incredibly quick, the first few unlocks are incredibly cheap, and the first few enemies incredibly easy. This stimulates the reward centers in players' brains. The same reward centers that give you a rush every time you pass an exam at school, or every time you get a pay rise at work. And it does it in such a way that your brain will start to crave it. That you'll want to play these games as a regular part of your day because the progression you're getting gives you it's more instant gratification than probably any other part of your life will. And this is why you barely can find a game now that doesn't have a battle pass baked inside of it. Yes, exactly. It's less about Every the $10 it pass. might cost you per season, it's more about trying to form a habit inside of you. At the point where you've paid real cash to get extra rewards every day, who's going to not log in and claim them? And at the point where they do that, why not just play a couple of games too? Now it makes sense why Pokemon Unite was so keen to get me to buy the Battle Pass, because as soon as I did, it makes the most efficient way to play the game from now on to log in a minimum of once per day. Some games like Diablo, they go even further with this, offering login bonuses that start tiny, but get bigger and bigger over time, so long as you log in every day, to the point where you'll actually be scared to miss a day because you'll lose so much progress on this bonus ladder. But it's the hobby part of Hook Habit Hobby that's the most dangerous. Because once that habit is formed, and you've already spent vast amounts of time and money progressing your character, this is kind of- I could have saved some money looking up guides to not get leftovers to level 20. Money progressing your um, character. This is kind of story, like where I, I am with Pokemon Unite right now. These companies oh, yeah. know progressing your character. A, I mean, this I'm is kind of like, what is this? He's level 4 Pikachu against level 7 Ninetales right here running around with Potion. Like, what, what do you- like where I am with Pokemon Unite right now, and it's like, companies know I, I guess I need to swipe my money. Anywhere. They have your complete, undivided attention, and that's when they start to change the way that they carry on. Can you just make a video like this to just demand this game like this? Like, isn't this just hundreds or thousands making your character stronger? And more on convenience. Wrong information I find being spread so out. Horrible, I don't know. Like, it's actually insane. By slowing down your natural progression, yeah, defamation is the word. Trying to sell you ways to speed it up. It's again, insane. Like experience point multipliers, making it so that I now have to pay to get that same high stimulation, fast progression feeling that I used to get when I first started playing the game for free. <laughs> Not a dissimilar strategy to drug dealers, I should point out, who effectively what? build their businesses by handing out freebies to get clients addicted, with the hope that they then become dependent and are willing to pay to keep that high going. It sounds stupid, but at this point in the player journey, most will- So if a bakery, if, if my local bakery gives me a free sample of one of their sweet things, they're trying to sell me drugs, they compare it to a drugstore, a drug dealer. If my bakery gives me like a free sample of some sausage that I can try, I go to like a supermarket, they give a free sample of something like, ah, the hey, spell is drug dealers. Earn, even let's like, just say a bonus 10% experience points. And yeah, I guess sugar is a drug, true. Called the IKEA effect. I should elaborate. See, it's a pretty well regarded fact that IKEA furniture is not the best quality, but because it comes in pieces and you have to assemble it yourself, that effort that you've put in makes you value it so much more. And in the exact same way, developers know that even if you realize that their game is not the most balanced, consumer-friendly, fair service out there, once you've spent weeks building up your character and putting in the work to make them right for you, you bought McDonald's Pikachu. So high, now he's gonna be a better player, guys. Now you will not die to night heads. But then we've got the question of value. We've established at this point why someone might want to make an in-game purchase, but what is it that's moving that needle that's pushing them to want to spend extortionate amounts of money? Well, in a large part, it's because they don't realize how much they're spending, thanks to a tactic known as material distortion. The idea of creating a layer between the in-game money that you're spending and the real world value of what that's costing you. And I realized, my God, this is so real. Like when I wanted to upgrade my items in Pokemon, I had to first buy item enhancers to do that. 
But then, it's not like I could just pay dollars to buy those item enhancers, I had to use EOS tickets. And then, when I wanted to buy EOS tickets, I had to use EOS gems. Or to put it another way, I had to convert my currency three times to be able to actually do what I wanted with it. This is borderline criminal. Because you not didn't. only has it started to feel- Borderline criminal? Like it's not real money being spent, but I've also got no idea how much each purchase is actually worth anymore. Not to mention the fact that you can almost never purchase the exact amount of gems you need. Meaning that A, you spend more than you need to, and B, you will always have leftover Oops. gems in your wallet that can't be exchanged back for cash. Which is just going to encourage you to make your next purchase by topping up just a bit more. And the video game on top of this whole alternate cash reality is that if you look a little closer, you realise that this game doesn't have a single mention of the word purchase. They never use the word loot boxes, they're prize boxes. They never use the word buy, it's always obtain. They don't even use the word shop, it's an emporium here. It genuinely reminds me of those killer clowns that you used to see on the internet. They have the most child appealing, innocent facade, but just beneath that thin veil, they're pure evil. Imagine if there was like a high street shop that tried to pull the stunt, that made you exchange your cash into tokens what? as you walked in. Has this guy spent. seen his thumbnail? Do I need to refresh his thumbnail? Do, do, what is this? He's he's talking about how people try to scam you and make you know make you look at things. Do you see this thumbnail? It says you will die unless you pay one hundred thousand pay now. Isn't this just literally the same? Like what is that? I mean what? <sighs> In that shop. You can't be serious, right? With it. Neither should I, these guys. It's actually insane. Oh yeah. And if we say that material distortion makes you pay two to three times what you otherwise would have for in-game items, then reward randomization, which all of these top games are now using, was going to bring that all the way up to ten times. This is Call of Duty Mobile. It's actually one of my favourite mobile games from a gameplay perspective. But check this out. A lot of the rarest and the most desirable items in the game are locked behind loot boxes. Like for example, I really really want this gun they've got in the middle. It's designed so that when it kills people it turns them into a shadow. A that will win me so much social validation. And it costs 30 premium coins to have a spin. It's about 50 cents in value. Is that a so skin or is actually store, a gun? I buy myself 420 coins. That should be enough to have 14 runs at this. I'll definitely get that gun. But then I lose the first one and I realize, huh? The price just went up, and it's going to keep going up every single time I attempt it. From 30, to 40, to 120, to 300, and beyond. It's making me feel like I'm so close to getting it every single time. Like, the pointer will literally sit above, and then just slip past the gun I really want. It will also, one by one, put a received marker over everything I have unlocked so far, reminding me of how far I've come, and encouraging me to finish it and get everything that the loot box could possibly contain. It's only when I check the hidden stats that I realised this is not a roulette wheel like it appears. Each item does not have the same chance of coming up. But in actuality, the real chance of getting this gun, it starts at literally 0.08%. And it goes up by just 0.01% each time until you've received every other item in the box. Zero. But at least, you know, I, I, that's actually quite like, I've never seen a game where you actually get everything in the loot box at Zero least. Eight in other games you would not even get it. That is... That is disgusting. You will you will almost yeah, definitely like... pay at least one hundred dollars for this gun. That is multiple times more than almost any player would have even considered skin, like... had it just been priced like it's, a I know it's bad, like, I agree with this. So I mean all of this explains it's... how these games are able to make, frankly, extortionate amounts of spending Yeah, because possible. humans are easily manipulated. Is create the sense I mean of urgency for those purchases. And the way they do this is simply by overloading the player. You remember how Pokemon Unite has no less than seven different currencies, and how I was completely and utterly overwhelmed by all the interlocking systems that came as a result of them. None of those needed to exist. You could have had the exact same game where everything was bought and sold with just the simple EOS coins. The only reason that we had to have seven currencies is to create multiple Okay, so how how is Unite gonna make money if they don't <coughs> if they don't sell stuff for money? Can this guy explain it to me? How is a free game supposed to make money if they don't sell stuff? By advertisements, like loading everything like in a game? You have to watch an advertisement for 10 seconds, and then you can leave your base? Like, what? Are you stuck in base until you watch the advertisement, and then you can walk out of base? Uh, what, what? How is he? Uh, of course they have to make some money. Separate in-game economies, in which you don't just have to be rich in one of them, but all of them to actually succeed. The worst part is, like, that you I wonder if he talks about the emblems. Like, the emblems are a terrible you system, and I 100% if you're just hating on the emblem system, I would be like, yeah, makes sense, it's deserved, right? 
I think he doesn't even talk about the emblem system in this. <laughs> Most games do this through energy. Oh no, wait, there it is. Pokemon Unite Maybe. It. And to be honest, the game Rage okay, Shadow Legends I mean, I guess kinda. is even more egregious. Where every single time you choose to play, you're spending not just your time, but also this virtual energy currency. Which you can either wait for stupid amounts of time to recharge on its own, or pay to refill your tank. So, just to be very clear, you have to not just pay to buy your items and level up your character and get your costumes, but also to play the game that's supposed to be free. And at the same time as feeling like you have to yeah, spend so in might make a video about those games once, or buy Unite. You're also given the feeling that you can play you Unite as much as you want without having no to joke, be locked behind something. Of you'll be shown. Like, you know, he make it sound like if, if you have to spend money to play Unite, right? In these games, they're all like, why does he put Unite in the same category as that? You see timers everywhere, always counting down. There's no reason why this Pokemon costume should need to expire. It's not like the Pokemon company is going to run out of virtual materials to make them. It's literally just to instill you with the sense of fear that if you look away, yeah. if you so much as put the game down for too long, you might just miss your dream item forever. And what I've realized is the worst part of how this game stresses you out on purpose is the way that it handles the Pokemon I mean, themselves. of course, but you isn't that everything? Like, if you want to go buy clothes, there's shit, stuff is on sale. If you go to a supermarket, stuff is on sale. It's gonna run out when I mean, the week is over. They're not on sale forever. Some things rotate. They're like, this t-shirt doesn't exist anymore after this week because it's out of the collection. Like, what is that point, so man? Access to cool new it's just normal just thing. Like it's just everywhere. Just like, it just makes no sense. The outfits for them. But... It's a battle pass as well. Battle pass history. Unless you I mean. pay to keep them, the game takes the stuff it's given to you away from you. And this taps into the very fundamental loss aversion that all humans have. We are biologically coded to disproportionately value something that we own, such that the idea of losing it would cause us more pain than the happiness we would get from obtaining it if we didn't have it. And these gaming companies are now using this to replace just having a shop that you can casually browse at your own leisure for instead allowing you to feel like the thing is yours first and then charging you to not snatch it away from you. The long and short of it, I mean, what I realized sure. from three weeks of playing one of these games, as well you as digging into why know. these companies are doing what they're doing, is that the more addicted you become to the game, the more profitable the company is going to be. That success in this industry is no longer defined by review scores or player satisfaction, it's defined by how effectively a developer is able to convert I mean, an true. innocent player who just wants to enjoy what they think is a free game into someone who possesses all the traits of a severe gambling addiction. I wish I could be the bearer of good news, but the truth of it is, these shady practices are getting more and more sophisticated as time goes on. They're starting like to- Like again, the segment of this video is fine, I agree. Mobile games are trying to scam you. Like mobile games are trying to make you addicted to spending money on like gambling stuff, right? Like I agree with that, but spread from I, mobile games to why does he games, target out Unite like this? Started seeing the effects right? that it's having on the next generation. Why is he targeting down Pokemon Unite like this when this impulse control disorders? So be aware of games that try to know. milk you for your money, and feel free to subscribe to the channel and share this video if you found it useful. But if you do find yourself in one of these games and you feel yourself about to throw your phone at a wall in frustration. I've got the perfect product for you. This is Rhino Shield's brand new grip. I have to buy it first, so I'm gonna fear of missing out. Which, once attached to the back of your phone case, prevents it from ever flying out of your hands. They weren't kidding when they called it grip. But that's no, but he sells products like this after a video like that. He's selling something. I I just can't take this guy serious. Not actually my favorite part of this. See, grip is not just about peace of mind using your phone out and about and not breaking your face when scrolling at night. It's also a kickstand. And for once, it's a kickstand that doesn't feel like it's about to tip over if I so much as blow on it. It's really solid and also just as customizable as Rhino Shield's cases. You can design your grip pretty much however you want. There are two sizes. Grip mini. And so I have to buy all of them to have better grip on my hands if I don't have this skin right here. Is it going to fall off my hands faster if I don't have this skin? Grip Max. And this Grip Max is also available in a MagSafe version, which works perfectly with the new Rhino Shield MagSafe cases. Is the pay on top is that Grip is pay also made from 85% I mean, recycled materials. Hit the link in the description if you want to get yours and use the. So, yeah, that's the, that's the thing, guys. Uh, let me know what you think. But, I mean, it's honestly, I feel like it's ridiculous. And stuff like this just hurts the game. I could just damage this reputation for, like, absolutely no reason at all.